Hey, what is up guys, I'm KBHD here, and this is Nexus 5X. Uh, didn't forget about it, I just started testing it after I was done with Nexus 6P. And I'm gonna make this one really short and sweet because essentially this is the same exact software as Nexus 6P, but different hardware. So in name and in person, the Nexus 5X is actually a successor to the beloved Nexus 5 from two years ago. It's made by LG again too, and it keeps a lot of the Stormtrooper Panda looks from that phone and then brings them into the world of 2015 specs. And this is what a lot of people were looking for in a new Nexus, and I like it a lot. It keeps those flat sides for easy grip and soft touch finish everywhere this time, and just overall a pretty clean design, even with the huge Nexus font on the back. So when comparing it to Nexus 5, I actually kind of like the new design a little bit better, uh, though with the exception of the slightly bigger camera hump, which just means it'll rock a bit if you try to text while it's on a table. But yeah, overall, this phone feels good to me. It's lightweight, especially when compared to some metal phones. Some have said like it feels cheap without any metal, and I do tend to agree a bit, but I've had no problems with the actual build. It's put together very well. And the smaller design makes it easier to grip than the bigger phones, especially with that fingerprint reader, which I realize might have been harder to reach on the back of the 6P for people with bigger hands. Now, in this smaller body, you got a smaller display, a 5-inch 1080p panel, but more importantly, it's an LCD panel now instead of an AMOLED, which means colors are a bit less saturated and definitely pops less, but this isn't something most people will notice until I guess you hold it side by side with a much better screen. Uh, and 1080p at this size is still 423 ppi, so it's still plenty sharp. The one place I notice the LCD making a difference is when ambient display turns on, especially at night when you can see the whole display light up even though it's supposed to be black. Interestingly though, I didn't see this have much of an effect on battery life. And speaking of battery, that's another thing that's different in this phone, so smaller phone equals smaller battery. And the Nexus 5X is rocking a 2700 milliamp hour cell, so that's actually not that small, but it's not 3400 milliamp hours or anything. So it's a decent size for what's inside, and battery life is pretty average. I have no problems getting through a day of what I consider normal use, you know, plenty of Twitter, email, and Feedly, stuff like that, but I pretty much never made it past a full day. What's nice though is Android 6.0's best new feature is Doze, and I've noticed this with pretty much every Marshmallow phone I've tested, standby time is excellent. Actually, while I was testing Nexus 6P, I had this 5X sit on my desk for literally a week, still signed in and pulling notifications and everything, and it was fine. So if you're a lighter user and your phone spends more time in standby mode, you'll have no problem with battery life here. And this is the USB Type-C phone also, as we expected with new Nexuses, and thankfully there is rapid charging here, even faster in terms of percentage than the 6P, since the battery is smaller. So we're talking something like four hours of use from 10 minutes of being plugged in. All right, the other largest difference between Nexus 5X and 6P would just be what's inside, the specs. And as a $400 phone, Nexus 5X kinda has what you would expect in an upper mid-tier device, Snapdragon 808 and two gigabytes of RAM, and the performance is pretty good with stock Android. Now, naturally there's some concern that since it's not super high-end, there will be some lag or delay, but I really haven't found that, and graphics performance is just pushing 1080p, so it's been just fine, smooth all around. The gigabyte less of RAM might be more of an important loss if you're someone who multitasks a lot, but even so, apps open quickly, and switching back and forth between them has been a breeze. And Nexus 5X handles heavy stuff like gaming really well too, again at 1080p. In fact, I think the only place I saw lag more than once or twice was the camera app, and this is actually the same with me on the 6P after a while. You can double tap the power button to open it quickly, and sometimes it loaded up nice and quick and you can take the shot. Other times it hesitated big time and actually missed the shot. So this is probably the one app in Marshmallow that I've had any sort of performance issues with, but once you get in a groove and use this phone with normal use, it's pretty much fine. Oh, and speaking of the camera, this phone is rocking the exact same optics and sensor as the Nexus 6P, so no difference in image quality there, which is great because that's actually a pretty good camera. The only minor difference is the processor is capable of pushing 120 frames per second slow motion instead of 240. But if you're interested in image quality samples, I'll have a link below to that. This is a great camera for the price of the phone. And you also have the fingerprint sensor on the back. In the same place, it's a little bit easier to reach since the phone's a bit smaller. And I'm not sure if it's the same sensor as the one in the Huawei Mate 6P, but it doesn't really matter because it's also really good. Setup was a breeze, took less than 20 seconds probably, and this fingerprint sensor is super quick and accurate every time. I'm glad I have it set up. And that's it, past all your hardware, is just stock Android 6.0 Marshmallow. There aren't a whole lot of surface bells and whistles. It's just pure, clean, functional experience like that we used from previous Nexuses. And I think that suits this phone really well. Nice and clean hardware, nice and clean software. 
Overall, a very well-rounded device and a really nice sequel to Nexus 5. So overall, with Nexus 5X, it isn't the best phone at its budget or anything like that, but it is one of the best. And really, if you were looking forward to Nexus, or if you're a Nexus guy, if you wanted a refresh of the Nexus 5, then this is the phone you're looking forward to. So overall, that's who I'd recommend the phone to. People who want a Nexus device, people who want an unlocked device, people who want that pure stock Android experience, and people who want to be first in line for updates. Not second, not third, must be first. So that's what this device will get you for the price. And that's basically it. Thank you for watching this review video. If you enjoyed it, feel free to hit that thumbs up button below, or even below that, there's a subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.